For classic matches done in the same style as this one, go over to patreon.com forward slash drunk redhead. Last time on the road to the World Cup, we were looking at the last set of games from match day 8 in European qualifying, including this goal from Gilfie Sigurdsson to help Iceland get on their way against Ukraine. This time out, it's the penultimate match day in African qualifying, starting in Group E at the Mandela National Stadium in Kampala, where Uganda were hosting Ghana. Unfortunately, the match finished nil-nil, but... Luckily for Egypt, it gave them a chance to qualify outright should they beat Congo. So let's have a look at that at the Borg El Arab Stadium in Alexandria. We had to wait until the second half to get a goal, but eventually the home side did get it. Mo Salah on 63 minutes to send the Egyptian fans wild. Two minutes from time, however, and Egyptian hearts were broken as Congo got themselves back into the game with a goal from Bukamutu. The Egyptian goalscorer Mo Salah was devastated evidently, but don't worry guys, it wasn't over because deep into injury time, Congo conceded a penalty and gave Egypt the chance to qualify for the first time since 1990. They just had to score a penalty. Mo Salah stepped up to take it in the fifth minute of injury time and blasted it to the left of the keeper. Egypt were victorious 2-1 over the Congo, which means they have qualified for the World Cup, as I said, for the first time since 1990. Over to a group where qualifying still up in the air, Group C, Mali versus Côte d'Ivoire at the Stade du 26 Mars in Bamako. Again, unfortunately, this one finished nil-nil, so I've put a couple of chances on there, but I can guarantee that this is the last nil-nil on the video at least. Thankfully, Group C's other game had a few goals in it, as Morocco hosted Gabon at the Stade Mohamed V in Casablanca. This would turn out to be a great day for Morocco's Khalid Boutaib, opening the scoring for the home side on 38 minutes. Moving into the second half and Boutaib got his second on 56 minutes to make it 2-0 to Morocco. We almost missed Morocco's third goal as the director seemed to want to focus on the Gabon bench, but Thankfully, it switched just in time for us to catch Boutaib's hat-trick goal, giving Morocco a 3-0 win. In the standings, Morocco lead the group on 9 points with Côte d'Ivoire in 2nd on 8 and Gabon in 3rd with 5. Group A now, and apologies for the quality of the footage here for Libya vs DR Congo at the Stade Mustafa Ben Janet in Monastir. That is as much footage as I can give you for the opening goal from DR Congo, Cedric Bakambu on 50 minutes, and then Libya got their equaliser on 69 minutes through El Masrati. DR Congo did get their winner though on 75 minutes, Mubele with the goal, meaning they still had a decent chance of making the World Cup. Standing in their way, however, is Tunisia, who travelled to the Stade du 28 September in Conakry to face Guinea. Unfortunately for Tunisia, though, it didn't start well, as future Liverpool player Naby Keita gave Guinea the lead on 35 minutes. In first half injury time, Tunisia got their equaliser, Yusuf Msakni, with a beautiful free kick. In the second half, it turns out Msakni wasn't done yet. He scored his and Tunisia's second on 74 minutes. Tunisia made sure of victory later on, 83 minutes on the clock when Ben Amor scored. And with the win guaranteed, there was only one thing left for Tunisia to do. They let Masakni get his hat-trick goal in the sixth minute of injury time. The final score, Guinea 1, Tunisia 4. Tunisia lead the group with 13, with DR Congo second with 10. We start off Group D at the FNB Stadium in Johannesburg, better known as Soccer City, the home of the 2010 World Cup Final. It also hosted today South Africa versus Burkina Faso, and in the first minute of the match, the ball just went over the line to give South Africa the lead thanks to Percy Tau. Then on 33 minutes, it was 2-0, Fembazwane scoring this one. 
A lovely back heel led to South Africa getting their third, Villacazi scoring it in first half injury time, and then Burkina Faso got themselves one back on 87 minutes, Alain Traoré's free kick, the final so, score 3-1 to South good. Africa. Now, Group D's other game at the beautiful pitch of the Estadio Nacional de Cabo Verde in Praia. Two late goals settled the match between Cape Verde and Senegal, first Diafra Sacco scoring on 81 minutes to open the scoring for Senegal. Meanwhile, in injury time, Cape Verde probably have a very valid argument as to why Senegal's second goal shouldn't stand. They were trying to clear the ball out to one of their own players. It hit the ref and went straight to the feet of Cheik Ndoy, who scored a beautiful goal, despite the controversy. The final score, 2-0 to Senegal. They now lead the group on 8 points with Burkina Faso and Cape Verde right behind them on 6 each. Now we head off to the Stade Amadou Ahidje and Yaounde for Group B's clash between Cameroon and Algeria. And as you can see there, Cameroon opened the scoring on 25 minutes thanks to a goal from Clinton and G. Once again, this is one of the matches where I'll have to apologise for the quality of the footage. It was rather hard to get, but thankfully the floodlights appear to be on for the second half, which gives us a much clearer view of Pangop's goal on 88 minutes to give Cameroon a 2-0 win. On to the last match of the video, and it was first versus second in Group B, with Nigeria taking on Zambia at the Godswill Akpabio International Stadium in Uyo. And to make it a bit more interesting for you, Nigeria just needed one win and they'll qualify for the World Cup. And they did get it, with Alex Iwobi scoring the only goal of the game on 73 minutes. And as is tradition on these videos, here is your confirmation flag as Nigeria qualify for their sixth World Cup finals. That's it for this video, hope you've enjoyed. There's only 10 videos left, hopefully we'll get them done before the World Cup starts. Like and subscribe.